Welcome back to our fifth and final day of our Helium 10 new content series, Predictions, Plans, and Preparations for Sellers in 2021. I'm Karen Thomas, and I am so excited to introduce and hear from the guests of today's roundtable discussion about multi-channel e-commerce. We're joined by Bradley Sutton, host of the number one rated podcast for Amazon sellers called the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. Bradley has launched over 400 products on Amazon and loves running tests on Amazon to stay at the forefront of Amazon strategy. Michael Labar is also here. Michael started selling online at the age of only 16, using Amazon as a platform to develop multiple brands that he has now scaled and launched on other marketplaces, including Walmart, Target, HSN, Woot, Groupon, Shopify, and more. We're also joined by Ryan Ebel, who has been selling on Amazon for eight years, and he's expanded to walmart.com three years ago. He's currently doing high six figures of annual revenue on Walmart. And we also have Ankit Patel here today. After successfully selling on Amazon, Ankit decided to expand onto Shopify as a second channel. His Shopify store now does six figures on it with 250% growth year over year. So with that short introduction, let's jump right in to this exciting discussion about multi-channel e-commerce. All right, thanks Karen for that intro. So I'm joined by three good buddies here. Um, and let's just like get to know them a little bit before we get into their predictions. Uh, first of all, we've got a uh, podcast veteran. He's been on the podcast uh, before on the Serious Lawyers podcast, Ryan from Las Vegas. Ryan, how's it going? Uh, doing great. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, for those who hadn't heard your episode on the podcast, can you just give a, a brief uh, history of your a on and off Amazon selling experience? Sure. I started selling on Amazon in 2012, and uh, that was white label and some drop ship. And then I morphed into private label in about 2014. I've been doing private label ever since. And then we also got into, you can call it uh, wholesaling and drop ship uh, a couple of years ago, and then branched out into other marketplaces like uh, Walmart, Chewy, Wayfair, uh, Google AdWords, and Google Shopping Actions uh, about two years ago. Okay. So like, I know, you know, this is kind of a difficult math to do, but like in the last two years, let's just say like how much total have you and your partner sold grossed on Amazon and how much have you grossed in the last two years off of Amazon on those other marketplaces you mentioned? Sure. Um, this year, I think we're going to approach 15 million um, between private label and wholesale and dropship. Uh, I'd say about 13 and a half is probably on Amazon. And then last year we did about 10 million and I'd say about 9 million was uh, on Amazon last year. Okay. So seven, eight figure seller on Amazon and a seven figure seller off Amazon. I love it. All right. Next up here. Uh, actually all three of these guys have been on the, the podcast. This is great. Uh, and Keith, and Keith, how's it going, man? Hey, uh, it's going great, Bradley. Where, where are you located again? I forgot. Uh, you told me before. Chicago. Chicago. Minute. Okay. Yeah. It minute. felt like Chicago here in Southern California yesterday. It was definitely windy. Uh, ridiculous wind gusts. I felt like I was, I was back there where, uh, with you, but except uh, I, I couldn't go to that um, Luminali's pizza. Is, is that what it's called? That, that one deep dish pizza? Yep. Luminati's oh. man. One of my favorite. Love pizza. that place there. Oh my goodness. Oh. Uh, anyways, we're not here to talk about pizza. We're here to talk about uh, you. And, and again, if somebody missed your episode on the serious sellers podcast, could you give a, a brief history of your online selling experience? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I've been selling on Amazon since 2015, uh, started November. And ever since uh, Amazon was my primary channel, um, uh, eBay, Walmart, um, selling on Amazon Canada, uh, Amazon EU. Uh, now I'm selling on Amazon um, AE um, and uh, also selling on Shopify now. That's also now my secondary channel. It used to be my third or fourth best channel, but now after Amazon, Shopify has been my second best channel. Okay. So similar question to you, like in the last couple of years total, how much would you say you have grossed on Amazon and off Amazon? Uh, yeah, so last year uh, I have done roughly about um, three and a half million uh, on Amazon, and I would say about hundred thousand uh, off Amazon. Um, 
And this year, the year over year growth is about 250%. So we'll be hitting um, six or seven um, on Amazon and off Amazon, I would say roughly close to 1 million or so. I have yet to calculate the December. So pretty cool. Pretty cool. I love it. I love it. All right. Last up here, we've got Michael. Michael has been on the podcast twice, actually, because he's uh, he was one of our first guests and then a year passed and we wanted to have him back. Uh, Michael, welcome. You're in uh, LA, I believe, right? You're still in LA right now, right? Nope, I'm in LA right now. All right. So what, g give us a brief history of your, like you, you've been selling on off Amazon, like eBay since you were like 15 years old. So uh, can you give us a brief history of your uh, on and off Amazon selling experience? For sure. Uh, so I started selling online, uh, which was first on eBay, uh, probably like, I would say seven years ago, approximately something like that. And then, um, you know, I found a lot of success selling, you know, starting from nothing, just honestly, just finding products, selling them, sourcing a bit of private label products, but not even private label, sourcing like wholesale from even from China, random products and, uh, you know, just getting a feel of selling online. Um, once I, you know, I, I saw, I had people in my community that were doing really well on Amazon, like I wanted to get into this. Approximately a year later, I started with a private label product at Amazon, um, which happened to be my first one, did really well in the fitness space. And, you know, I kind of sort of say fell in love with it. And I, I, you know, dedicated like a, a, the next couple of years to really just focusing on building that brand on Amazon, um, developing that and, you know, um, learning, you know, learning the platform inside out. And from there, I, you know, I was, I started getting more into the branding side of things and I, which caused me to start really focusing on where else could I grow my brand? What other marketplaces are there to grow my brand? Is retail an option? What, you know, where else is there to really, you know, because from, from, you know, I had listings that had issues, that accounts had issues, and it was so much more than that. At that point, it was, it was the brand that was for me. It was so much more than just Amazon. Um, and from then on, it just, you know, I started investing more and more in, you know, those type and in, in other channels and growing the brand. So that's a bit, you know, you know and okay. then recently just, you know, exploring different marketplaces and trying out different ones, but there's, you know, the main ones. What, what, what would you say then is, is in the last year or two, same question, you know, like, like your gross revenue on Amazon, uh, on Amazon versus off of Amazon. So I'm not going to go with my, like the, the, like my, with my partners, just like off my personal, mm -hmm. um, on Amazon, not a lot, probably I would say one, one a little, a little over one. 1 million and then off Amazon, I would say uh, for our fitness brands, we're probably at around two five, um, 2.5 million for this. So you sell more off of Amazon than Amazon right now in your personal brands? Uh, this year, because we had a lot of issues with our accounts and our listings. So this year, um, this is the first year that it's like that. I'm always, I'm always I told you, Michael, to stop incentivizing your reviews so you wouldn't get your uh, account now. <laughs> just, <laughs> exactly. just playing. All right. So cool. So we, we've got, as you guys can see here, we've got three individuals who are definitely experienced Amazon sellers, but why we brought them on is they're experienced off Amazon uh, seller. So let's go back to Ryan now. Um, 2021 is upon us. What's like your predictions for, for, for off of Amazon opportunity, like in the marketplaces that you're selling on, like, like, you know, you've been selling on Walmart, for example, for a few years, and you've seen the, the, the changes that have kind of happened on that platform. Um, and then you see like maybe even a push towards the Walmart plus, I'm not sure, but what would you say? Like, first of all, for Walmart, um, what do, what do you think is going to be, be new or what's going to be important uh, next year? Yeah, I think um, participating in Walmart fulfillment or using their partnered uh, 3PL provider deliver to offer Walmart customers the two day shipping, free two day shipping, uh, maybe even one day um, shipping would be important for sellers. I know Walmart is trying really hard to push their Walmart Plus subscription uh, and get more traffic on their site. Unfortunately, I think that they are probably about five, four or five years behind Amazon. And I really wish that they kind of um, went aggressive maybe five or six years ago because now it's playing catch up to Amazon. So that is probably going to be a little difficult. I think they're going to have some big challenges with the Walmart Plus because uh, Amazon Prime is pretty saturated in the American households, so, and I really don't think people are going to be willing to spend uh, money on a Prime membership and a Walmart Plus at mm -hmm. the same time. If you had to pick and choose, I would probably stick with the Prime because you have all those digital benefits like the movies and stuff like that. Um, 
you know, that's going to be challenging there. Uh, Walmart is trying really hard. Like they do have a lot more footprint, physical footprint than Amazon in terms of stores, retail locations. Mm -hmm. They, I think they are trying to leverage that to their best ability to deliver products quicker to customers. But at the same time, I think those only apply to their first party sales, right? Because it's the products that yeah. are located in those retail centers. Um, so I think that's still a hurdle for Amazon's mm -hmm. uh, Walmart sellers to uh, kind of take advantage of that opportunity that Walmart's trying to grow on. What so. about Wayfair? I didn't even realize you were selling on Wayfair. Like, is that are you doing are you doing wholesale there or drop shipping or you, you yeah, have so, your own private label on there? So Wayfair is there as a company. Wayfair is one hundred percent drop operation. All of their vendors, all of the products they sell are drop shipped from people vendors like us. Um, they reached out to us. They were expanding. We're in the pet product, uh, pet category. So they're expanding away from their furniture line, getting into other kind of household goods. And so they contacted us and uh, it was a pretty interesting opportunity there. So I know that they're expanding like crazy. Okay. So now with, with these predictions in mind, uh, think about what you would do. Like if you were, you know, if this was you like three years ago and now it's 2020 or somebody else who maybe was in your shoes three years ago where they, they started uh, on Amazon, they're pretty successful. Like, what would you say is something that somebody should do to, you know, how, how would they be able to expand? Like, would you definitely suggest in 2021, um, absolutely, you know, expand to Walmart, absolutely expand to Wafer or only if maybe under certain circumstances? Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think you need to have a solid foundation on Amazon or wherever your primary marketplace is. Um, make sure you've expanded all your opportunities there before you take the focus away to another channel. So if you do have the capacity, the bandwidth to take on a new platform, I would definitely get on Walmart. Um, I think there's an, uh, a waiting period and it's not clear how long that is. Some people get accepted pretty quickly and other people have to wait around. Definitely at least get on the wait list for Walmart if you're not already. I would take advantage of that opportunity because they're trying really hard to grow and um, we'll see how it, how that works out. I think um, year over year, they're posting some tremendous growth. So it, it will get there. It just might take another. Okay. Uh, and Keith, now you said your second uh, marketplace next to amazon.com is Shopify. What, what, uh, what do you see as, as, happening as far as the Shopify ecosystem in 2021. You have any predictions for us either about just your own business or just in general, how Shopify does things? Yeah. So Shopify was the one thing I only opened up uh, in the beginning because I wanted to get a brand registry as my website. And back then I couldn't afford the higher developer to do it. So I'm like, what are the platforms? And that's how, I, what are the platforms that actually let you drag and drop and upload your images that you already have and create a website? So that's how I come across Shopify. And then I realized actually Shopify is a bigger platform and I learned more about it, how you can create your own website and really make a good brand out of it. So Shopify is definitely growing a lot. Their stock is really going up. And this Black Friday, Cyber Monday, Shopify had totally nailed the sale. Um, I forgot exact amount, how much they sell, but it's just so much. And um, I, I, I think I was part of it because I have never done a close to six figure sale in one month over Shopify. I was surprised. And um, don't you, you only know, have like one or two SKUs too? Yeah, I only have main one product is my only wow. one main product. And the rest is just other uh, complementary products. So I'm in the electronics category. And um, so with the Shopify, you know, it, it's, it's tremendously growing. It's like America is usually runs on small businesses. You know, a lot of people has a small business, which after the pandemic hit, uh, Shopify is going to be new norm where, if you can sell your products online, your own store, rather than go on uh, brick and mortar, uh, Shopify would be the next platform. So in 2021, if you haven't done Shopify, you have a lot of opportunity to do it. And if you are only relying on Amazon to be your main brand, if you build your brand up on Amazon, you should definitely start, start out Shopify because there are strategies out there for Shopify to grow your business. You could run Google, Facebook, Bing ads, and that's what I'm doing. And I have been investing since January um, up until now and haven't had made any profit. But, you know, remember, it's work up towards to it. So this is the first month where I actually made the profit minus the ad spend, minus the fees that all associated. And I actually made some money on Shopify. So that is a great feeling. And all these close to six figure sales, man, that's your customers to keep, you know. And now the next time you launch a new product, you can go back to those customers and say, hey, there's $30 coupon on Amazon. Go buy it over there. 
you know, so those customers get incentivized, you know, you can ask those people to do anything you want. So that's why I love Shopify a lot more. So I'll be focusing more on Shopify in 2021, as well as on Amazon and other channels. So then maybe somebody, you know, a similar question to Ryan is like somebody who was in your, your shoes, you know, maybe in January this year where you were fairly successful on Amazon already, you hadn't gotten into Shopify, you know, or start digging in, like what's the, what's the step? So you, you start your Shopify account, you put your product in there. That that's a no brainer, but then talk a little bit about what they need to do in order to get uh, eyeballs on that, on that website. It's not like Amazon where there's this existing traffic already. So you, you mentioned Facebook ads and Google ads. So like in month one, a new seller um, who was in your shoes, you know, around your level, like what would you tell them? Like what should their ad spend be and, and how do they even know, know what to target and, and things like that? Yeah, so this is an interesting thing. So the most important thing to do is before even you bring spend some Facebook dollars and Google dollars to bring traffic to your site, and there are more ways to do it. You don't always have to pay. You can go micro influencer and influencer people on Instagram, TikTok, now also on YouTube. You know, people you could bring a lot of traffic to your website for free. Also, you could also do SEO. However, before you do any of that and invest your time and hard work onto it, what's important is to learn from Amazon how you wanted to make your store appeal to the people. Because, you know, if you just have a product and if you're just trying to sell the product, then you will have a lot of drop off. Um, so what you want to do is you want to do, uh, present your brand and your listing page. Uh, you want to do um, put the, you know, buy buttons correctly and, as, you know, shop pay, all those kind of things. Make sure your listing page is beautiful. Make sure they can browse your website, you know, uh, back and forth correctly. Um, um, make sure your shipping, your policies are up to date. It, make sure your Shopify page basically looks beautiful, you know. Um, um, so then, pe- and then drive the traffic. And then what you can do is you could start with a small budget, which is like thousand dollars, and throughout the month and test it out to see how many people come, what's your conversion rate on, why people are dropping. You can use um, you know hot jar uh, type of software where it actually can tell you where people are clicking and things. So gather those data. You need to research it. You need to figure out um, what kind of CRO implementations you will need for the next month on. And you have to keep implement those things, build your customers, uh, capture emails, you know, keep your audiences engaged. Um, you know, and I have implement since I've been investing on Shopify in January. Finally, this is the month that actually paid very well. Mm-hmm. But I have been implemented a lot of things on my website in order for it to work because. Otherwise, if your conversion rate is less than 1%, yeah. all your ad spend is not good. You wanted to get to industry standard, which is 1.7 to 2, or even higher than 2%, which is going to yield more profit. So depending on your product, there's a lot of factors that can go on to it. Um, for example, six months ago, I didn't have a professional email sequences like all these big brands do. If you go visit their website, if you put their email in there, I wasn't sending any email. So I was, I know, losing a lot of, you know, uh, money or leaving a lot of uh, revenue on the table, but by implementing those, my revenue went up. So if someone go visit my website, I have my Facebook ads are set to retarget them no matter where they go. If they're on the Facebook, they will be seeing my ad on Facebook by using yeah. Facebook Pixel. By Google, it's set. We will be retarget. If you go to Yahoo or whatever CNN, my ads will be showing up because you just visited my website either from Facebook and now you're on Yahoo CNN. So make sure your whole circle is targeting. Even on YouTube, you will be seeing my ads right there. So you want to retargeting is the most important thing. For, so you have to work. I mean, it's a long story to answer your question, Bradley, but it's like a funneling approach is what I have done that works very well for me. You had to prospect your people, bring it to the middle funnel, retarget them, capture their email and go after them and convince them to buy your product because you got to figure out how many points and days it takes for people to buy your particular products. And when you figure out those secrets, you can really make Shopify work because it's really no brainer. You just have to invest on it step by step. Okay. All right. Good. That's some good strategies there from somebody guys who, who did the exact same path, you know, uh, Ankit a year ago might've been in your shoes if you've never sold on Shopify and he's showing you how you can, you know, just a couple products, even, even scale up uh, to such a, a great amount of sales. Uh, Michael, uh, you're, you're, you're doing, if I'm not mistaken, like Groupon and Walmart and, and eBay and Target and a bunch of others. So with, with any one or all of them, like what, do you have any kind of predictions on what's going to happen on some of these other marketplaces for 2021? 
Yeah. Uh, so to answer that, there's I mean, I'm on a lot of different marketplaces, and you know some have better success than others. Some certain certain product lines do really well. Certain product lines don't. And you know I could cover a lot of those marketplaces. There's some very interesting ones like HSN. I don't know um, if we remember we were on the podcast last time and we talked about HSN. I was I was just launching at that point. Now we launched and our first product, like without any marketing, is already selling. I think like 15 units a day. So we're adding on another nine SKUs. Like, um, you know, for zero. So there's a lot of interesting marketplaces like that. But I wouldn't, so to say, suggest that the sellers. I would. To, or what I would really suggest, and what I would like to speak about for a minute, is Walmart. Um, so I'm honestly, uh, I'm very surprised at, at the performance we've had on Walmart. Um, when Walmart first started accepting 3P sellers, um, I guess it was more a, a bit over a couple of years ago, um, or I don't, I don't remember exactly how long it was. We applied early on. When we got on, it was very hard to integrate with a lot of stuff. You had to use an API. Yeah, everything was through APIs that were mm -hmm. not even so developed. We had you had a lot of issues, and you know they were, you were able to start. You know we saw some some sort of performance that was, you know was worth spending a bit of time there. Um, now where Walmart has been headed with so much, so much growth and with so little management, in my opinion, uh, I think it's just a no-brainer for anybody who's an Amazon seller, has Amazon selling experience. It's so easy, so to say. Um, and you're just even just putting up your listings there and building up that presence. So as you grow with with the Walmart trend, so to say, um, could be very worthwhile. And the thing I really like about Walmart is. I understand like a lot of the reasons why people want to get off of Amazon is because, you know, they control your customers. You can't do as much. And, you know, the risk Walmart, on the other hand, is extremely friendly to sellers. I know during COVID, we had a ridiculous late shipment rate because um, we were back ordered like over 5000 units a day because um, we were in the big we were in the fitness category for Walmart. So we had like a few of the top SKUs there and they were complete. They were worked with us on it. Um, you know, I, as, as you, as you like your customer, there's a lot of information, you are able to do similar funnels that you are able to do on your website with your Walmart customers, because they just give you a lot of that information. And if you're creative about it, there's ways to, you know, get those to be your customers for your site, or even just keep them in on Walmart. And there's a lot of things you could do there. So just in, investing in Walmart, there's like the approach where you could just, if it's just setting up your listings and, you know, letting it, letting it grow a bit and doing a bit of very minimal work, you know, you will have that really nice revenue where, you know, you'll could grow with the trend. And, you know, some products you don't do as well in Walmart, but it doesn't hurt that it doesn't really it doesn't hurt to really get it up there. And what's really interesting about Walmart, I've saw it, there's been very few products that I've lost money on on Walmart. Um, I don't think there's been like one, maybe. And you know, with Amazon, it can happen all the time. And we're on Walmart, we're break even within a week, usually. Um, so, you know, I think especially if you're limited on budget or whatever on my case might be. Um, or if you know you rather put your budget towards Amazon, you rather put your budget towards Shopify. Walmart's a no-brainer marketplace. Now there is, you know, um, there is. If you take a serious approach to Walmart, there, what I, that's what I love about it. There is a lot to learn about it, and if you dive deep into it, there's a lot of different tricks, a lot of different hacks, and things that you know you like. Kind of it brings me back to my good old Walmart, um, Amazon days when everything you could. There were so much little things you could do that really helped really increase your sales. So Walmart still has those those opportunities. Um, so I think it's just a great marketplace. There's about um, applying there. It, it, they do have an application process. Just be diligent when you're filling out your application. But something I know worked for me in the past, and I've, I've, I have a few accounts and it's worked recently. I just did an application last week is apply directly through an API, through an API service, even if you're not going to use a service. So right now, you could use Walmart Sell Dashboard to do everything you need. There's no need for a, a, like a tool like you know, Sellbrite or Big Sell or any of those. But if you apply through those, uh, applications get pushed through way faster. Like mm. um, applications that have applied straight to Walmart Marketplace take a few weeks. And I, the last week I applied through um, my AP, one through one of these APIs and the next day I got an answer. So um, a lot of times it's a conditional approval and then you know, they'll do more research and then uh, and then they'll usually approve you. But that's just, you know, it shouldn't, it doesn't hurt to really to apply at all. Um, and just, you know, if you take a serious approach to it, great, if not, um, there, it's still a good opportunity there. And, you know, there's where you're going to find is that some products just don't move at all on Walmart. There's just not that demand. There. There's some products that just move a lot. Like, for example, one of our products, um, we launched it like last year. And on Amazon, it's one of the most competitive products. And it, it, I wouldn't, I would no way I would have made money on that. Like the average seller has like 10,000 reviews. It would have taken forever to build up. I launched it on, on Walmart probably like seven, eight months ago. Probably cost me a couple hundred dollars in all different marketing I did to launch that. And over COVID, um, we were the number one seller for that, you know, for 
the, the entire period for that product. I mean, on Amazon, I would have never had that chance, and especially just the, the profit margins are great. So uh, I think in general, like you could get, it's, if you just you gotta just take a deep look at it, just be creative about it and try to see what other sellers do, what you could do, um, different approaches that you would have used for Walmart, for Amazon, there, a lot of the same fundamentals work. Um, and, you know, I, I think there, it, it is worth taking advantage of uh, to trying to get those customers to become yours because there's a lot of ways you could do that with how open they are about those customers. So I, it's a great marketplace. I love it. <laughs> and it's just, uh, you know, there's some stuff you should, you, obviously you should do WFS. We've seen it improve for a lot of our listings. Um, ranking at, if you could get the pro seller badge, um, I've seen it improve, um, improve sales a few percent and it's not that hard to um, reach those metrics. Uh, when, you know, there's little hacks for Walmart and, you know, you go all day about little hacks, but there's, you know, Walmart gives you different metrics for how you're filling out what, like what, how much content you fill out in your listing. And you know, they, they actually show you the rating for that. And, you know, if you do that in the right amount of time, and if you do that within a certain time period and you fill it out well enough, We've seen, we've tested with a bunch of listings. We've seen ranking increase a lot. So um, yeah, there's just a lot to do. You know, I would start with a few of your listings, see what happens, test out different things. And that's kind of what we've been doing. Um, and just, I, that's where I've seen it going. I see more sellers getting on the marketplace. I see more, more, you know, I see more growth. I see Walmart pushing more spend behind it. I, you know, I'm, you know, there's obviously a lot of other marketplaces, but if there was one to invest in, I, I, I see Walmart as the, as the best opportunity. Yeah, I think most people can, you know, obviously everybody knows Amazon is number one. And then, you know, the other two marketplaces that are off Amazon that maybe come to mind might be Walmart, like it's been mentioned, and Shopify. But, you know, you 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 sell on more marketplaces almost than anybody I know. You know, like I never even heard of, you know, before you'd said it, you know, that people sell on HSN, uh, Home Shopping Network, as a, as a marketplace and these others. What would you say, what's your prediction as far as 2021 as – one of these other marketplaces are really going to make a move, you know, in, in 2021 to, I, I don't know about if they're going to catch Walmart or Shopify, but, but who's going to like all of a sudden come out from the pack where it's not going to be like, Oh wait, people sell on that. Where at least people will know like, wow. Yeah. I, I know a lot of people who sell in this marketplace. Which one would you say? The best chance for that is target. Um, now targets in this the one that's most similar to any chance I get in my opinion uh, you know, they're starting getting better at working with sellers. Uh, you know, there are, there is for certain products, there is a nice amount of volume there. Uh, I think it's interesting in a lot of ways. It works very similar to Walmart, like Walmart, a lot of the advantages of Walmart and cover too much, but why Walmart's going to grow even more is because as your products do well, you get, you, you know, DSV reaches out to you, which is Walmart buying team, um, online buying team. And, you know, once you, once on Walmart's online buying team, it's much more stable sales because they promote it more. And from there, um, Walmart's recently been integrating their e-commerce buying team with their retail buying team. So they have been approaching some, some large e-commerce sellers and brands. And uh, Target's very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, my friend just got into Target nationwide because his brand did really well on Target.com. So I, I think it's, it's, it's different because it's, it's meant for brands. Target's meant for brands and Walmart brands do better on Walmart. Um, as well, because be, um, they'll they'll get more DSV opportunities and they'll get obviously more retail opportunities, and I think that's where Target is. So in that essence, it's a bit different. But I feel like Walmart, um, Amazon sellers have been had time to kind of build that foundation, especially with how Amazon's been transitioning to, with brand registry. A lot of a lot of of Amazon sellers already have enough to kind of start with that, and that's mm -hmm. why um, Target and Walmart work well for those. The other market, there's a lot of other great marketplaces which are going to grow and they're going to do well and. Uh, obviously they're going to grow, but they don't, I don't see them as, as, as much of a fit for Amazon, uh, for Amazon sellers, because they're more like, you know, being able to offer a really cheap deal on a really cheap deal on a, on a really interesting product or, you know, something along those lines. And Amazon sellers um, usually don't have, you know, those type, those type of capabilities to provide, you know, 10,000 units at like ridiculous yeah. um, cost and thing, you know? So like there's this site called Woot, which is owned by Amazon, great for sales. We move ridiculous. W-O-O-T? Yeah. And we've moved a crazy amount of units there within like a 24 hour deal. And, you know, but your margins really low. Like you just have to be smart about like you, we used a lot of that, you know, a, lot, a lot of those sales and with different promotions within the packaging to kind of drive sales to the site. So there's things you could do there, but I think in terms of marketplaces that are going to really grow and are going to be Walmart and target, I, I think target's going to grow in a different way. It's not going to be as many sellers, but I see sales growing for those sellers a lot. Walmart is starting to allow more sellers. So it's going to be a little bit of a different environment, uh, environment but I think both are very interesting. Okay. 
uh, go, going back, a last question for uh, Ryan. Like, what would you say your number one goal off Amazon goal is in 2021? Like, like, is it, hey, I want to reach a new figure on selling on Walmart. Hey, I want to do this on Wayfair. Or, hey, I want to start selling on Target because I just got inspired by Michael. Or, or what, what would you say is your 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 number one goal for 2021 off of Amazon? And, and briefly, like, what's your strategy and how you're going to reach that goal? Um, well, yeah, I am interested in Target now, so I'll check into that. But um, I was thinking more about our own website. We need to improve our conversion rate and get that better because we are pumping a lot of money in ad spend on Google, but it's not as efficient as it could be. So we do want to boost the profits there. There's some significant uh, opportunities there. We're in the bulk uh, food business, so we just started taking bulk orders and getting customized bulk quotes on our own website and getting those customers as their repeat business, like these other B2B customers, um, when we can send them pallet loads of product at a time every month. So that's what we're really focusing hard on. Okay. Uh, and Keith, what about you? What's your number one goal for 2021 as far as your off Amazon strategy? And what are you going to do to get there? Yeah, so I have uh, two main goals for 2021. Number one is grow my, continue to grow my brand and add more product um, that complements my brand because you can't just have one or two or three products. You have to continuously, when you're in electronics category, you have to continuously add new products because it's like an iPhone industry. Like every, every year people need a new something to buy. And if you don't fulfill that requirement to the customers, your brand's going to die out. You, you know, you might be very good this year because you started out two, three years ago, but now the competition is getting faster. So my number one goal is to continue adding more products, much better and smarter products into my brands on Amazon. Um, along with that, I wanted to grow um, definitely on Walmart much better. I haven't been doing very good on Walmart. Just too much roadblocks coming up. Shopify has been finally doing good, but I guess you can do well at any channel. Uh, you just have to invest your time and uh, have to uh, implement a strategy for it. Um, so I wanted to get into multiple marketplaces, especially Best Buy, because all my competitors are somehow selling mm -hmm. on Best Buy. And I know being a Helium 10 Elite member, I know we had a, uh, Kevin King told us how we can um, go sell products to Best Buy. So I had to figure out how to do that. Uh, obviously, Target has been on my list, but I don't know how to. So you need to kind of figure it out. Um, I've been selling on Newegg also, so wanted to implement those. Um, but the low hanging fruit currently seems to be like Walmart and Best Buy for me. So definitely okay. got to, you know, sell a lot more over there, invest more time and energy there. Excellent. Excellent. What about you, Michael? What's your, uh, do you have a goal of launching on a platform that you haven't launched before or, or some idea about how you can rapidly expand on one of the existing off Amazon platforms? What's your 2021 goal? Well, my 2021 goal specifically for our fitness brand is to, really put in a lot of focus on Walmart and Target and really grow our brand presence there. So we, you know, so we get that brand presence on Walmart and Target, which will hopefully obviously lead to a lot of sales, but hopefully lead to um, Wal either Walmart nationwide sales or Walmart nationwide retail or Target nationwide retail. Um, and I think for both of the, you know, between both of those marketplaces, really focusing in on that. Um, and at the same time, um, you um, really scaling a lot of these other marketplaces that we're using, but using them more as a, uh, uh, for sure, the deal side side of side of it to really help grow our brand presence to bring sales to our to our site and kind of grow that that brand presence a bit more, especially since that helps the retail um, approach a lot. Uh, you know, if we able, you know, if we have some retail, uh, that will help us get into retail for that. So using Walmart and Target as a way to really generate a lot more revenue, which will hopefully in addition lead to retail and using these deal sites more as a, a brand exposure mechanism and you know to drive some initial revenue. Uh, and you know, there's so many marketplaces to to go on, and there's so many. There's really no right or wrong. Like for some person, for, for yeah. people, Target might be better. For some people, Walmart might be better. For some people, it might not be worth it to do any. What I like, just a quick suggestion, because I've seen people do this, like try to do too many marketplaces. Re understand your brand. Do the research about all the marketplaces and how they do for your brand and your products. And you know, it's usually pretty easy to see. And based on that, decide one marketplace or maybe two marketplaces that really work well for your brand, focus in on that. Um, and I love making actually more money. It doesn't mean you have to leave the other markets places behind, but one way we, where you could do is there are companies and agencies you could work with that there's specifically like even softwares that, that are part of companies that you literally just put your listings on there 
and they have you could turn on they have a list of they actually own the accounts with all these marketplaces that are locked that you can't really have accounts with um, and you could turn them on and you're obviously not going to get the best performance because it's not as dedicated, you know, but you just, you don't lose anything. You put it on there. They charge, a lot of them charge this percentage fee on sales. And I, you know, that you could do, but putting in your focus on one or two marketplaces that are the best fit for you, um, for your specific brand. You know, some people, there's just some categories that just don't do well on Walmart. Um, and, but there's some that'll just do way better on, on, uh, you know, on target, like beauty products do way better on target than on Walmart. Hmm. so you know it's just understanding um your marketplace and that's why I, where my goal is to invest in, I mean, both these marketplaces are so great stronger in walmart because that works better for my brand um and just put a lot of focus there so it could lead to more cool cool all right well guys thank you so much for your time and if you're listening out there and you're you're just getting started selling on amazon you know maybe you've got some ideas about down the road what you could potentially do or those of you who are selling only on amazon right now and you know don't feel bad uh, don't think that this is unattainable. These th three gentlemen here, they literally came from exactly where you are. You know, they didn't miraculously one day end up being a six and seven figure seller on, on Walmart and Shopify and these other marketplaces. You know, they gradually built it up. So, so you, if they can do it, uh, you guys can do it too. So hopefully uh, rewind some of this episode. Uh, if you want to get some of those tips and maybe there's some new marketplaces that they mentioned like HSN or Woot or, or these other places target that maybe you didn't even consider selling on before you saw this. So maybe uh, ask yourself, what can you guys set as your goal for 2021? How can you expand off of Amazon in 2021? So you can become big off Amazon ballers like, like these guys uh, here. So Ryan and Keith, Michael, thank you so much for your time. And let's see, uh, let's talk, let's uh, meet up again at the end of 2021 and, and see if you guys were able to reach those goals. Wow, what a perfect way to end day five of our complete mini series, predictions, plans, and preparations for sellers in 2021. Not only is the Amazon opportunity bigger than ever, but so is the whole e-commerce industry as a whole. Now, I don't know about you, but I didn't know some of those online sales channels even existed until today. Thank you so much for watching our Helium 10 content series, Predictions, Plans, and Preparations for Sellers in 2021. I hope you've gained some valuable insights to take your business to new heights in 2021. Everything we do here at Helium 10 is to help you be successful. And if you haven't started using our Helium 10 tools yet, then this is the perfect time to start. You can claim 50% off your month one of your Helium 10 Platinum or Diamond subscription. Just use the code in the link in the comments below. I wish you all a very happy holiday season and a very warm, healthy new year. And now I'm gonna to pretend to take this vacation that I wish we all could take right now. Ah, that looks so nice. Bye.